where will Britain find two and a half million new jobs? If only the answer were as simple as and direct as the question. That's why we're embarking on the Channel 4 Jobs Report, seeking imaginative and radical ways to create new jobs. Who better to ask than some of the nation's leading employers and job creators, some of whom we've asked to be ambassadors for the Jobs Report and to contribute their own solutions. They range from big employers like Sainsbury's, O2 and Weetabix to ambitious start-ups. And I'm joined by four of them right now. Stephen Leonard, UK Chief Executive of the technology giant IBM. Mark Hamilton, Managing Director of Security Personnel at G4S, who employ 600,000 people globally. And Holly Tucker, Executive Chairman of the gift website notonthehighstreet.com. In Plymouth, we're joined by Chris Dawson, Chief Executive of the home and leisure retailer Range. So let's start immediately with the question of whether it's easy enough to employ people and whether you think it would actually increase the number of people you might take on if it were eased, if the whole business of hiring and firing were eased. Well, I think for us, actually, there's a different challenge, which is about skills. And actually, the biggest challenge for us is finding people with the right skills. As companies across the uh, entire economy look to better exploit technology for new opportunities that the digital world and the advance of globalization is presenting, technology is a key enabler. And really finding those skills has been one of, the, one of our key challenges. Well, skills we'll come to in a moment in more depth, but uh, that's your priority. But you don't have quite such a skilled workforce. I know you have some the high skills requirements, but <clears throat> fundamentally you're an unskilled labour force. Well, I think that's maybe a misconception because in the, the security industry it is actually skilled labour in this day and age to, for somebody to be in a position to protect assets and to protect people requires a great deal of training and understanding. So I, would, I think that's part of the problem in this day and age that we don't see employment as a certain or certain standards of employment are seen as low esteem positions in society. But what about the ease of actually taking people on, I mean, uh, and getting rid of them indeed? I mean, can you ebb and flow? I mean, after all, you're in a very interesting industry because you're affected by government policy. Mm. And one day they, they, they're going to close a prison, another day they're going to build it. So uh, how, do, how do you move about with the job requirements? Can you, can you hire and fire easily enough? Well, I think that the, the hiring is easy enough. <laughs> the, the, the firing is, is, there's no doubt at all, the employment legislation as it's grown over the last 20 years particularly has proven to be difficult for employers. But there is, you know, if you've got the correct procedures in place and the correct HR support in place, mm. and even for small businesses that's, that's achievable, then it's not too difficult. Holly Tucker, you're in a sort of very different world where you've got, well, I think about two and a half thousand people supplying and then you've got 50 people who do the kind of sending back out again. Uh, where are these jobs going to come from? Um, well, we have two and a half thousand what we call partners. These are small creative businesses here in the UK. And actually their ecosystem actually also um, helps support another 5,000 jobs here in the UK. So actually from the um, nearly 100 staff we have at notonthehighstreet.com, um, we're going to, you know, employment will be found from small businesses um, striving out there, that idea um, and that one-man band becoming a two-man band, three-man band, and that is what we've been able to see over the so last six years. So it's an organic years. process Absolutely, it's organic, yes. Uh, and you don't feel there in, are impediments to that happening? Um, not as far as, you know, a uh, classic... Demand will drive it. Classic entrepreneur, no, I don't believe that. Um, right. Well, no. uh, let, let's, let's go down to Plymouth and, and Chris Dawson. I mean, you describe yourself as Britain's fastest-growing home, leisure and garden retailer. So That's is correct. it easy to hire? Are you worried about... Uh, employment legislation? Well, I think we need to concentrate not just on employment legislation, whether it's hard to hire or to fire. I'd like to see an academy for all ages actually directly, in my case, retail and also manufacture, which incidentally has just gone on to a seven day a week twilight shift. So we will employ two and a half thousand this year. And you know, the, the hardest thing for us is to actually find managers that can manage. And let's face it, you know, you'd think, well, three odd million or 2.6, but we are quite happy to go along with the government and form an academy, and I mean a, a professional academy, not as a, uh, as a also ran or a long-term unemployed, somebody who directly comes to us or indeed somebody else, but we'd have the first pick of the crop if we were funding it with the government. We well, need I, I mean, an but, academy. But you have taken us right to the core of the problem 
um, yep. which IBM e experiences, which is how yes. do you find skilled people? You say, I can't find mm -hmm. managers who can manage. Well, we've been pretty, uh, I wouldn't say it was lucky. We've got a lot of people want to join the brand. And like I say, two and a half thousand this year. And we, uh, we're going to employ even more on the manufacturing and so mm. on. But yes, there is a problem. Without a shadow of a doubt, we need a lot more training. And we mm. think we need a lot of help from the government to be able to subsidise the training programmes that right. we require. Well, let, let, let's go to Stephen Leonard, because you, you raised the whole question of skills. Yes. Um, yeah. And the problem, actually, is if you can't find them here, you might as well find them in Eastern Europe or wherever. Yeah, and that's part of the challenge is, you know, for order for, you know, the British businesses to realise the, the, the estimated £50 billion of incremental growth in the economy that we can get by applying information technology and info, advanced information technology better, we need skills to enable that to happen. And that's of the benefit of the economy. And what we've been doing with uh, the skills, the industry skills group called eSkills, is we've been actually helping redefining the GCSE, GCSE programme, mm -hmm. for example, with a programme called Behind the Screen. Yeah, but that's a slow burn, isn't it? I mean, it'll be some years before those GCSEs come through and bear fruit for your company. In the meantime, uh, what about immigration? I mean, there, there are people who want to deport the kind of people you need to import. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a whole combination of things at play here. There's thinking about the long term, there's thinking about the short term, and, and immigration is a short term answer if you can find highly skilled people that you can bring to the country for a short period of time. But it's to build not a short term uh, answer when it comes to growing British jobs, is it? I mean, well, the jobs are British, but the people who fill them aren't. Yeah, I mean, but what we are finding that with, when you do bring people to, to the country, they create other jobs around them. If they have a high skill area that's highly mm. specialised, they can create other jobs around them. And it's not just about them mm. replicating their skills in others, but it's the, the knock-on effect that they have by engaging in what they are doing. They can create other jobs. It's the budget next week, uh, so I'm just wondering what you think the Chancellor could do to improve the prospect of <coughs> your, for example, taking on more people. Well, I think there's, there's always an opportunity for the Chancellor to do something with direct employment costs. So, for instance, the national insurance rate, you know, the indirect taxes do have an impact on, on the ability for employers to take on more workforce. So I'm hoping that the Chancellor's got something for employers. Well, I mean, the problem, problem with that is that, that that's a revenue tax for him, and for you it's a burden. And so where do you find the happy medium? The happy medium is if the Chancellor remembers that British companies need to employ people to get the economy going. And... The more, the more encouragement we get through indirect adjustment to taxes, the better it is for us. Chris Dawson, I mean, what would you ask the Chancellor for? You, you've had a couple of years of very high employing. Um, what, yes. what would help you to boost it further? Well, for sure, I think they should um, ease the way that you employ people. And there's a lot of people talking about firing, which is never a good thing, but... Without a shadow of a doubt, that has definitely got to be eased up. And on top of that, I'll go back to our academy. I want academies directly to the trade, whether it's car, car making, retail, manufacturing. I'd like academies help subsidised by the government so we can take on all ages and we'll have a ready-made person. I agree with you, John, that the other way is just a bit of a slow burn way. So Holly Hunter, I mean, uh, your, your issues are slightly different, but is there anything which would, you think, increase what we described as an organic process of, of, of putting, getting more people working? Um, I think that the, you know, going back to basics, you know, we un uncovered a hidden army of women out there mm. who hadn't had the light shone on them. And we have now two and a half thousand small businesses. Um, our, ourselves, our history is that we didn't get any help when we started. Um, we've had to do this organically. We've been able to pump £100 million into this small group of um, traders. In and, a period and of Senate. recession. In a period of, well, we know nothing else, actually. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the other side. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think that the government can look at the, those very basic things that when you start a small business and you want to join something like Not on the High Street, mm. how can they supplement the joining fee? How can they help them do some marketing? £500, £200. It's very, very basic. But you can see the businesses in our um, organisation has gone from <clears> the kitchen table to now coming up to turning over a million pounds in one single year. Mm. So just a small amount of seed funding can absolutely do a huge amount. Um, of course, to these the, the truth is, in, in, in high technology, there are cottage industries in which guys are working at home and the rest of it. Um, 
Is there anything you would ask the Chancellor for in that direction? Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of partnership with uh, lots of startups. We sponsor a lot of startups mm -hmm. every year. And we would say, absolutely, I'd agree with Holly's point. You know, can we help more startups get into business? Can we help them form more partnerships with large firms like IBM and others? And, and that in itself will, again, help this multidimensional issue that we have to, that we have to grapple with. Stephen Leonard, uh, Mark Hamilton, Holly, thank you very much indeed. And, and indeed, uh, Chris Dawson in Plymouth, thank you very much indeed.